This week, episode 252, Stogie Geeks. I am your host this week, Joe Hozempa. We have Joe D in studio, and we are interviewing Vice President of Sereno Cigars. Carson Sereno is live in studio. Excited for that. Second segment, the Stogie Geek segment, we are going to interview uh, Pierre Rogers from PuroTrader.com, if everything works out technically. And then, Stogies of the Week. Stay tuned. This is a Security Weekly production. At tip, can we play it? Yeah, one more time. Can I hear a... Yes! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the dirt. Guests and friends here in studio, including a regular cast of characters, Mr. Joe Hollywood to my right. How are you? That's awesome. Joe D's here. Rain Man's here. Happy What's going on, I Joe D? Round table discussions. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Stogie Geek Show. This is episode 252. I am your host this week, Joe Hozempa. We have Joe D in the house. How you doing? Very good, sir. And it is a privilege and an honor to be sitting almost next to Carson Uh, 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 Serino uh, uh. of Serino Cigars. (laughs) It's a privilege to be here. You have uh, come on the scene, and 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 we are definitely going to talk about that. Okay. uh, With the Serino Cigars, the Wayfarer. And um, your Connecticut and some of your other cigars there. We're going to talk about the future of yep. Sereno, how you got in the business and all of that uh, type stuff okay. there. So uh, I'm just getting that all in yeah. there to get the motion going. You nice. feeling it? Yeah, I'm feeling it. You excited? I'm excited, man. I'm excited to have you yeah. here. I'm so yeah. I'm so glad that 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 you you were able to make it. Oh yeah. So I, I appreciate that. So welcome everyone to the show. I am your host this week, Joe Zampa. We got uh, fabulous uh, stories to tell. Uh, I will tell you in the stories of the week, uh, there is a high rating done by me. Um, it's in the either fight or the other one, the okay. Oasis. So. Um, that's crazy, and th- this will be the, probably the first Stogie Geeks episode where I actually have a high rating and a box worthy in the same thing. So I have had a, a, a incredible week. Oh, it's monumental in, week, then, in, right? In a monumental week, which probably means for the next ten weeks I'll be <laughs> very disappointed in what I'm smoking <laughs> and stuff like that. So uh, you you will definitely have to uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, they're uh, almost ready to announce 2018 Stogie Geeks. There's a lot happening. There's a lot of moving parts here for this show. Um, not at the liberty to, to uh, give out stuff yet, but you definitely want to start uh, staying tuned to this Stogie Geeks podcast because let me tell you something. We, we have a fabulous lineup from now until the end of the year. Stock chock full of interviews. Awesome stuff happening. And um, it, it's just, it's just a, it, it, it's a great way to, to end the year. What do you think? Everybody loves a teaser. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that's tuned. what's going on. But now we have live in studio, Carson Serino, Vice President of Serino Cigars. And let me tell you something. I'm, I'm, I'm totally honest with, with what I have to say about cigars. Your cigar came in, came in on the scene. I had the Maduro, mm-hmm. the uh, triple, the, the double X, the, 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 yeah. the double X. Yeah. Maduro had that. And um, in one shop in Rhode Island, you are dubbed as JoJo's boy. Nice. So your cigar is JoJo's boy cigar because they're like, <laughs> they're like, what is this? I'm like, dude, you gotta try this. I'm telling you, it's it's a great cigar. What about the Connecticut? Try the Maduro. You know what I mean? Connecticut's be- good too. No, 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 no beca- I because I knew their palate. You know yeah. what I mean? You know. Uh, and then and then you came out with the uh, uh, shortly after that. The uh, Wayfarer. Wayfarer, yeah. Yep. And which then, we're smoking right and, now. And which, which we're smoking right now, and you'll get into to, to that blend and yeah. stuff like that. But, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where, you know, um, I, I learned a lot from consumers mm-hmm. where they expect it to taste almost like what it what what the Maduro was. Mm-hmm. And then you get totally in a, in a somewhat of a different direction, which I think kind of gives the consumer a little bit of teaser – yeah. As to what you guys are all about. Yeah. So let's start with what what you guys are all about. You know how you got into the business. Okay. You, uh, the 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 lines of cigars and you know. Okay. All all that type of stuff. Well, we started 20 years ago. My father started the company, Anthony. Okay. Um, and he got into the business mainly as an importer. 
um, slowly started as a manufacturer, mm-hmm. and then, uh, you know, for about the th- last 15 years, he's been doing private labels, making stuff for other people, mm-hmm. and uh, with making stuff for other people, you know, a lot, they uh, did a lot of kind of famous brands, and I was coming out of school, and I went to school for branding and marketing, and he asked me to come into the industry, and I love cigars. I always have. I've been grew up around it, mm-hmm. but I wanted to get around and start doing our own brand. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, we can still have our private label business, but why don't we, you know, put Sereno on a name and start our own brand and put it on shelves? And that was kind of the start of everything of, okay. of the Sereno line, and that was only two years ago. Um, I graduated school about four years ago, but you know, it took us a couple of years to you know make blends and packaging and you know just getting structure of the business around sure um yeah so that started and we also met omar gonzalez alamon in the la corona factory uh great cigar maker because the factory we were making out of for other people is dominican intercigar um and we wanted to i love nicaraguan cigars Mm -hmm. my dad started to really love nicaraguan cigars Mm -hmm. so he kind of uh and he didn't want to be putting out blends for other people that we were also using and putting on the shelf. Yep. So when we met La Omar and started using La Corona, that's when all of Sereno started happening. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. So, you know, you, you make a good, uh, uh, interesting comment, which is part of the theme of what I've been saying here for the past almost year on Story Geeks, is that Nicaraguan scars are really here to stay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And not for nothing— they're really eating up part of that Dominican market share. Mm-hmm. If you look at it from a branding and marketing perspective, mm-hmm. um, I've actually done some some research on it. And if you were to cut it up into a pie chart, you know, uh, you know, the, the this is Cuban, this is Dominican, this is Nicaraguan. These are all the different. You know, this is Honduran. Mm-hmm. Every year, Nicaraguan cigars make more of a splash within the U.S. marketplace. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, absolutely. Just the appeal of it, the flavor, like you know, America, every more richer. Mm-hmm. Uh, more strength and i feel like dominican cigars a lot of the time a little bit not lighter in profile but there's a lot more fin- finesse kind of to them sure yep. um and that's i could just see how the american market would really gravitate towards nicaraguan cigars yeah sure. absolutely you know it's it's one of those things where you know even within the wine industry you know uh when i used to work a retail shop i used to say you know you know when someone's like oh i want to try something new and i would say listen what region do you like? And because mm-hmm. and, and, and a lot of people, when they work in a cigar shop, they always ask, well, what do you normally smoke, right? Yeah. What brand name? Mm-hmm. I've always asked what region mm-hmm. because if they said Nicaraguan first, I knew that they were up for a little bit of cigar experimentation with some of the boutique cigars. Yeah. And, and, and you know, but if they said, you know, I only smoke Dominican or I only smoke Honduran or, mm-hmm. you know, you know, yeah, or, you're probably or, not going to put them th- on this. Th- you, you, you wouldn't put them on some, yeah. something like that right away. You might ease into the conversation to see how open their palate is. Mm-hmm. But, you know, with that being said, you know, ultimately when you work in the shop, you really need to, to, you know, try to understand your customer as fast as you can, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, you don't want to turn someone off, but you definitely want to try to understand the, the yeah. uh, palettes that they have and what their tolerance is and uh, stuff like that. So Sereno came came on board. So came on board what two years ago? You said yeah, two years ago. Yeah, came on two two years ago. Yeah, are you you sell it outside of the United States as well? Uh, yeah, we have a few European accounts. Okay, cool. So a couple in Switzerland, one in Germany, mm-hmm. uh, and one in Italy. Okay. Yep. So yep. What's it like? Uh, go, you know, because you've seen the other side. Going, going with the, um, you know, uh, seeing other brands that are a little bit, they might be more known from mm-hmm. from your family business stuff like that. What's it like when when you go there and you know? It it's a lot of time on the road and like uh, it's a challenge. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? for sure. Right, absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it it it's definitely a challenge. You know, what do they say when you know they they talk about the uh, blends? If you want to get into that, you know. Um, well, we started off with four lines. We had the core line, uh, which is the Serena Royale line, and that consisted of the Connecticut, the Medio, mm-hmm. the Maduro, and then the Maduro Double X. A lot of people with the Maduro Double X, they think it's a stronger cigar, but it was just my uh, it was my father's favorite blend, and he was in the industry for 20 years, so the XX actually means 20. 
There you go. Anniversary. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nice. And everyone's just like, is this like double a hero? And it's like, no. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Because, you know, uh, the consumer mm-hmm. and the tobacconist or the retail shop owner uh, has to, you know, look at its presentation from a marketing perspective. Mm-hmm. And when you see the double X, you know, you, you I could see where, where they would say, you know, would it be twice as strong? Or, yeah. Or, or something of that nature. So mm-hmm. how, have th- how have things been? They've been great. Yeah? Good. Yeah. We're in over about uh, 200 shops now. Mm-hmm. Um, the XX was kind of the one that a lot of people gravitated towards. Mm-hmm. I can um, see that. And I think it just goes back to what we were saying earlier about what the American market really, um, what they look for in cigars. Uh, I would say, you know, either something rich and full or Connecticut, and there's kind of a a split off between those two. Mm-hmm. So um, the XX, a lot of rich Maduro smokers, they kind of tended to gravitate towards that. And uh, then the Connecticut is probably our second best seller. And I think that's just because there's always going to be Connecticut smokers. People want a light, mild, easygoing, uh, start of the day cigar mm-hmm. or beginner cigars as well. Um, and it's then a um, market and it's a different Connecticut altogether, right? Yeah. I truly enjoy it. It's citrus and floral notes, uh, really, really pronounced and mm-hmm. it's, it's different. And it's got a little bit of strength to it. It's not like your <clears throat> traditional, you know, father's Connecticut where it's just super mild, easygoing. I would say it's a Connecticut that wavers from mild to medium and gets to the medium spectrum, a good amount of the profile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, let's get into the um, process that you went through. So, you know, you, you said we're going to create this cigar. Mm-hmm. You went down to the factory. How many uh, did you go through a lot of tasting things? What were you looking for to I, to identify with, with the palate saying this is it? Uh, for which one? All three. Okay. <laughs> um the first line took forever, man. Which the, was the which Royale line. The Royale, okay. Yeah, the, yep. all of them because we aged those for two years after the roll. Um, so it's got five and a half year age filler in it. And then when we were down there blending it, um, probably went through 15 or 20 for each different one. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you're looking at about 80 different uh, skews to go through sure. just to get, you know, four blends. Um and we weren't originally going to release all four at once. Mm-hmm. But during that time, the same year we decided to come out is when all the FDA was hitting. Oh, yeah. And we're like, well, we need to get all these on the market. <laughs> yeah, so, we're launching. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, yeah. no matter what happens, we are going to launch. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. We're like, right. we made all these cigars. They're going to get the market. So, yep. um, so yeah, they were originally going to be staggered like one every six months, one every maybe uh, – you know, two a year for the next two years. Yep. Um, but, you know, we hit the 16 trade show and just all four rolled out. Yeah. And it's uh, on the, uh, there was an Iceland trip in there somewhere. and uh, That was for Wayfair. That was for okay. Wayfair, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah the whole was, Iceland uh, an thing. interesting story in there. Yeah, um, Wayfair is a backpacker. And, uh, you know, somebody who travels around country kind of by foot sometimes as well. Um, the thing with Wayfair happened was when, me and my girlfriend, we uh, went backpacking to Iceland for about four or five weeks. Mm. Um, I had a bunch of cigars ready to go. And uh, as you guys saw, I'm not the most timely person. I showed up for the show right at 2 <laughs> o'clock. It was supposed to be <laughs> started right at 2. But um, we were going on to this international flight. I was about uh, 45 minutes to get on board at the airport. Mm. Um, had a whole, like, travel set. And... Um, I left that in the car midway through checking. I'm like, oh, shit, you know? Yep. Oh. Yeah, no cigars. And oh. so, um, and you're going to Iceland. Yeah. Oh, the story's going to be fascinating. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I get over to Iceland, and, uh, you know, they don't sell a lot of Dominican, Nicaraguan cigars. Yeah, well, they got, like, Vela. They have machine, a lot of machine-made They have machine-made, yep. a lot of bundles, and then a lot of Cubans. Yep. Um, and there's still only, like, two or three stores in the whole country. Um, but th- when I came into the airport... You know, they had a good selection of Cubans mm. and uh, went there, stocked up for about four, you know, four weeks worth of cigars. What'd you grab? Uh, there's a lot, man. There's uh, Cohiba Espendidos, Partiga Serie D number four. Um, I had Trinidad Rays. Monte Cristo number two. There are some Monte number twos in there. There you go. Um, yep. <laughs> 
H. Upman Petite Coronas. And, uh, man, I'm missing one more. It'll come to me. That's cool. Yeah, but that was like the majority of it. Yep. Stocked up on those. And, you know, being around the industry, I've smoked Cuban cigars before, but I've never immersed myself for like that was the only thing I was smoking mm-hmm. for, you know, four or five weeks straight. Mm-hmm. Usually it'd be like a buddy gave me one or I'd find one and, you know, pick it up and, yep. you know, have one here and then get back to my rotation of, you know, smoking Dominican, Nicaraguan, Honduras, fellow manufacturer stuff, our own stuff. And, uh, you know, I really just kind of fell in love with the profile, mm-hmm. um, you know, when you're around it for four or five weeks. And yep. it was something that we were kind of missing in our catalog or, um, you know, our portfolio of a right. line. And Omar and Lewis, they're from Cuba. They ran the La Corona factory in Havana. Um, I came back and I was like, we need to blend a cigar in similar style. And I think it would be a great fit for our portfolio because it's vi- not – similar to really anything we have in there mm-hmm. and uh yeah that's kind of how wayfair came about nice yeah. so you went backpacking yeah how was that that was awesome yeah yeah and so did you go up or sideways did you traverse we or? did the whole we did we did the whole country we looped around uh um all of iceland we did about two weeks on the south side two weeks on the north side uh did it in january saw the northern lights that was really cool mm. nice. uh Iceland has some really awesome beer. Yes. Went to this place called Einstock, a brewery. Mm-hmm. Uh, great brewery. Cool dudes. Um, that was on the north side. And then everything else, it's just like a picturesque, uh, you know, country. Yeah. You know, waterfalls right off the highway. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, you know, one side will be all s- snow, and then the other side's completely green. Um, picturesque. Yeah, yeah. It was sweet, man. Yeah. yeah I've done some, some backpacking. I did yeah. the presidential traverse. Okay. Which you traverse all the mountains in New Hampshire that are named after presidents. Nice. And whatnot. So, you know, we d- we did it. We could have cheated and got delivered by car mm-hmm. at the at the Mount Washington depot there mm-hmm. where they can do it. But now nah, we, we got dumped off in the parking lot and did it. And <laughs> let me tell you something. It was, it was I, I never forget this. I was, I was actually talking about this last night where it was June 27th when we started, right? So June yeah. 72 Yep. Degree day, mm-hmm. and then we're up on the top of Mount Washington, and it's 28. Oh, it changes fast. And yeah. hail, and you know wow. it, it was it's it was crazy. You know what I mean? And then you know we had a thunderstorm underneath us, which it's it's it's, it, it's so I could only imagine that's New Hampshire, right? Right. I could only imagine going to Iceland, seeing the Northern Lights, seeing that. It's just like, like pitches will never do four, it four, justice. Four yeah. five week uh, clip. Yeah, it's something, yeah for sure. Some, yeah, Oz was uh, three day. We we did it in three days. But most people do it in two. Mm-hmm. Uh, we 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 did it in three. Uh, it was a group of us, so it was it was just like I said, just that experience alone. I can only imagine doing it for, for four weeks. And, yeah, and doing that. So then you you got yeah, inspired. Tedious, like oh yeah, by yeah. like week two, we're like all right, yeah. this is awesome. <laughs> it's ready to go home. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but but you had to complete a loop, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. After I was over it, I was over it you know day and a half knowing mm-hmm. that like you know so i could only imagine that you know the, psychologically when you're about halfway done you're like yeah you know nothing works up there yeah. no cell phone no nope. cell phone was was complete i remember i took a cell phone uh, in a backpack and a charger like a solar charger there yep. and it's just completely useless <laughs> like come over like completely useless up there it's it's a it really, it really puts things in perspective you know it's yeah. that's cool that's cool stuff um, yeah, there was only like two main cities there mm-hmm. where we cell phones were even cool. Like Reykjavik, this it's not even a big city, but big city to them. Hofen, and then we were in there for about you know five days at a time. So the rest of the time, yeah, yeah, you're you're doing your thing. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's a good time. Now, now you've traveled. Did you stay in like huts along the way, or did you have like tent there, or what? Uh, we didn't tent it up. We. Uh, Airbnb a lot of place, which okay. was interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then found hotels when we could. Yep. And uh, then in Reykjavik, we Airbnb, but we rented out a whole house for six days. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So then you, so now you're on this trip and you get inspired. Yeah. And, and you decide to create this blend. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sure that had some some testing. Uh, oh yeah. Testing and trials, because the blend is 
when when you take your Connecticut and you take your Maduro and then you take the Wayfair, the blend is 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 completely different. They all stand alone. Yeah, for exactly. That, for sure. Know? Yep. You know, so it, it's it's definitely a uh, interesting uh, blend. I like it. I usually it, it's one of my go tos. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a few in my locker in one shop. I have a few stashed away in my portable backpack in my car. Nice and stuff like that. And you know, it's it, it's it's it, it's uh, it's just an interesting smoke. Yeah. yeah. So why don't you tell us about what we are smoking now? Um, it is a okay. So it is an Ecuadorian Corojo 99 wrapper. Um, and then the binder is a Corojo 99 Jalapa based binder, which adds a little bit of strength and sweetness. Um, and then the filler is Criollo 98 and Corojo 99. Mm. So it's going to be a very. It's got a lot of kind of oak woody notes to it with an underlying sweetness um and i would say like the uh one thing the aroma is one of my favorite things about this cigar it's uh got kind of like a campfire with a little bit of sea salt kind of aroma to it mm -hmm. um and that was one thing that caught all of our eyes when we were going through this blend we were like wow that's like it was just so pleasant to be around um so, yeah, I would say the tasting notes on it, oak, uh, a little bit of cedar, vanilla, and then kind of a cinnamon baking spice to it. Mm -hmm. For myself, graham cracker all day. Yeah. That, that's, that's something that uh, yeah, you, don't see, you, know, you don't see too much uh, as pronounced in certain cigars, but for me, that's, it jumps to the forefront and uh, yeah, it piques your interest. It does have a, 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 a very... Subtle sweetness that will linger on the palate, yep. mm -hmm. and and the retro hail is is completely amazing. Yeah, you know, with some cigars, you you can kind of not say that so much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, but but the retro hail, it's it's when I smoke it, it's kind of like uh, it, it 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 slows down. Like I don't know if you have of that feeling. Common effect, yeah. Of, you know, of you know, there's not too much. You know, I would take this on the golf course. I I want to be for me. I want to be stationary. Sit in a nice, uh, nice, comfortable chair. Just enjoy it. Just yeah. uh, soak it up. You Absolutely. Know? You have a question for Carson? I, I just wondered if you could uh, expound a little bit more on uh, Omar Gonzalez Alman for uh, for the viewers. Uh, the guy's big time. He's worked with uh, Hoy de Monterey, yeah. Romeo Julieta, like a um, myriad of yeah. big companies. Omar, you know, he's not as well known in the States, but um, he's a uh, Cuban master blender. Mm -hmm. Grew up in, you know, with the outside of Havana, mm -hmm. uh, started off at the Partagas factory just as somebody, you know, as a young man on the floor, uh, graduated um, as an expert roller there and got moved over to La Corona, started the same way, and then uh, moved his way up there. And uh, La Corona, it's not no longer called that in Cuba anymore, but when he was there, you know, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, it was known for uh, Hoyo de Monterey, some Romeos, um, some Monte Cristos, which Monte Cristo and Cuba spread across a few different factories. Um, Por Laurent, Laurent, I can't even pronounce it. Por Laranja uh, was That's also okay. made there. I go through that problem <laughs> every <laughs> single yeah. Soya Geeks episode. Por Laranaga. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it. La so, Paranaga? Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it La Paranaga? Yeah. Is that the, the they're with uh, uh, Altaris, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's La Paranaga, but, mm -hmm. you know. I am not an expert. I think yeah. I should have went to Spanish lessons first. Me too. For Story <laughs> for, 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 for Geeks and yeah. then became the co-host. But, you know, I yeah. digress. Go ahead. <laughs> um, and then uh, he worked his way th through there, um, started general manager, floor manager there, and uh, wanted to own his own farms and factory with how Cuba set up. He, you know, that wasn't really possible. Um, so he moved to Costa Rica, stayed in Costa Rica, had his small factory there to get started, uh, you know, made a little bit of money out of there, and then went up to Nicaragua, uh, bought out the La Corona factory, which uh, was old factory, uh, North American Tobacco. Uh, I forget the full factory name, but uh, bought that space out. And uh, his own farms in Esteli and Jalapa, where we grow all of our own tobacco, and uh, started blending out of there. Yep. You know, so he's got definitely. Uh, he's got a resume for sure. Yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely got some pedigree behind him. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And I knew when we, I wanted to make the Wayfair in that style, 
Um, you know, he's more so making a lot of Trent cigars with the Royale line and what, you know, he's seen been selling well and stuff he personally liked himself. But when I told him the project of Wayfair, the profile I was looking for, he was like, I got this. Like, there yeah. You go. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, he's definitely the right guy to be. What Serena anyway. cigar and characteristics best describe you? Wayfair. Has to be. Yeah. I, 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 it has to be, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Did you read the website? Yeah, well, no. You go, you go know, to SerenoCigars.com. Co- and uh, right? a few other yeah. cigars, too, in there. So yeah. I, I wanted to make sure, you know, this is, uh, this is the one. Yeah. But, All nice. right. My favorite question is marketing. Mm-hmm. You got a little guy on a suitcase on, on the uh, band of the Wayfarer. Mm-hmm. He's not backpacking. What's he doing? He's got a little top hat going on. Yeah, and um, he, he, he's strutting through. He's strutting in, on, on Broadway somewhere. Right? Yeah, exactly. It was originally gonna be a backpacker. Okay. Um, we made some proofs, and we we're like, yeah, the cigar guys. No one wants to be smoking it with some like <laughs> backpacking <laughs> homeless dude on the band. Um, <laughs> so that got vetoed by my dad real quick. Um, and then we. Uh, I'd like to be on a fly on the wall in that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> How did that happen? Co- does he call you Carson? Yeah, Carson. Yeah. Carson, because yeah, he's from he's from uh, Massachusetts All actually. Right, right. So so Carson, yeah. let me tell you about these. Well, how, <laughs> yeah. Take us through that conversation. Yeah. You have to realize who you're <laughs> selling to. Like, yes, the cigar is going to sell, but cigars are also known for they need to look elegant and yeah, they should. Them up a and bit. you yeah. know, they as much as you want to do your own new thing, you should be able to do that, but adhere to tradition a little bit. Okay. You know, so that's kind of, and I was like, all right, that's fair. Um, so I went and started looking at the Is term Wayfair. Wayfair. Yeah, Wayfair. Yes. I'm talking about the guy, yeah. this guy. Mm-hmm. See this guy? He's I'm trying saying, Is it Wayfair to, yeah. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. All right. I missed it. Right. <laughs> Come on. Right. We both missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. Right? Um, yeah. Um, so I looked up the term Wayfair. You know how you can go on Google and search, like, when was the term most used? Mm-hmm. Um, and we found out it was most used in the 20s and 30s. So if you look at the guy, he's kind of like one of those old school, kind of gangster looking guys. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, we kept with the script, the Wayfair looking really classic, like it would maybe be something on a general store back then with, you know, a nice script to it. And then the guy was a, uh, you know, 20s, 30s, maybe like traveling salesman type looking right. guy. Mm-hmm. That's what I get. You know, maybe one of the guys that slapped a bunch of like stickers on his suitcase, kind of style. Sure. Yeah. So, travel to to a shop near you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It 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 does have a good a good a good uh, swagger to the the guy walking around. I Mm -hmm. I did notice that because I'm when I when I see a new cigar, I'm I I love the marketing aspect of of the of of any business, Mm -hmm. but I love how. Um, when we get to interview people here on different Stogie Geeks episodes where, you know, we, we, we always take away a little bit more of, wow, that guy was there because of that. He was originally yeah. supposed to be a hippie backpacker guy, mm-hmm. but now he's not. Uh, Carson got talked, uh, that got shot down mm-hmm. by the powers to be, <laughs> probably over a family meeting. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and and then so there was this weird turn <laughs> where my dad thought, like, it'd be cool to make like an old Western kind of guy, mm-hmm. um, like, you know, maybe from, I don't know the time period, but like that kind of rustic and those proofs were terrible. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Now you coming from a marketing advertising background, you, I'm assuming that you did all of the own design. You, 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 you're, you're responsible for that whole layout. Yeah. yeah. Me and my buddy, Josh, uh, he's a great artist, up and coming artist. Um, and I'm a type junkie. So I, I did the script mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, married the Sereno Cigar Co. in there. And then he did all the filigree, the guy, um, and then the side band as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, me and him make a pretty good team because, like I said, I le- I'm really into doing type and, you know, script. And uh, and he's just an all-around great artist. So mm-hmm. I gave him what I was looking at, and then he kind of filled everything else in. Mm-hmm. And then advertising, uh, s- still on that subject, with the Royale. I'm assuming you went with, with the Royale Blue yeah, for that band. Mm-hmm. T- take us through that artistry yeah. there. Uh, Royale series, we wanted it to look really elegant and uh, very traditional because that's. it also speaks about me and my dad a lot, what he believes cigars are and how I think the market is moving as well. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and you know, I learned a lot from it too, because like you said, you can go that route, but try to marry in a little bit of that tradition because cigars are traditional. Like it's such a beautiful business mm-hmm. that you should try to keep that, you know, going. Mm-hmm. So um, how do you feel the market is moving? I think, you know, you see a lot of boutiques and the way they're branding cigars. It's definitely more modern. Mm-hmm. Um, more i feel like targeted towards my age the 30 to 50 uh age market Mm -hmm. and uh that's and then i also see you know the staples the traditions that will always be there but i see the people that are coming onto the scene and making more of a splash kind of have a little bit more modern branding Mm -hmm. yeah yeah the boutiques have definitely um pioneered that younger feel Mm -hmm. for um you know, making it the the new retro, if yeah. you will. Yep. Kind of like know. the craft beer industry. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? There yeah. you go. Yeah. I, I think those industries with their marketing and branding go hand in hand. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a big fan of craft beer. Mm-hmm. A huge too, fan of the industry. I mean, it's, you know, I've brewed my own beer and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And people still, like, oh, you gotta, you're going to do that again and do that. It's like, yeah, right. It takes us a pain. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. it, it's one of those things where, you know, the, the, the seeing businesses and um, had the opportunity in my uh, other career where I host a radio show to interview the president of the Rhode Island Brewers Guild and, you know, getting uh, holding that, how, having that hold on to tradition. I love how they come up with, with, with the names, yeah. the, the, the marketing behind it, mm-hmm. because I look at it because what, what people don't understand is that when you have something for presentation. Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be cigars. But when you have something for for presentation, people are going to um, make a purchase decision uh, based upon pre- uh, presentation. Yeah, you know, at least your first purchase. Absolutely, you know, and then Absolutely. maybe as much as you love the presentation, th- if the quality or the product isn't your style, then maybe not. But definitely, you know, your first grab is going to be going to catch your eye, and, that, and yeah. then hold up. You know, the, the product has to hold up on its own merit afterwards. Which uh, you know, your cigars certainly do. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I, I'm really digging that that majestic uh, look on the uh, the Royale series, though. That's yeah, yeah. C- certainly catches your eye on the shelf. It's mm-hmm. different, you know. And uh, Royale. And another thing with that, we wanted to use a color of a band that a lot of people didn't. Um, we didn't know yep. how. I was gonna go there. I was. Yep. Yeah, we didn't with the Royal Blue, like you said. Uh, just there's so many good cigars on the market, and. You know, with really prestigious, nice-looking bands, but a lot of people don't use blue. Well, the um, blue pops, yeah, and yeah. I think it definitely pops. And that was another thing we, uh, and it's approachable, just like you know, uh, consumers. It's a color that people have always gravitated towards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna, I was, I was going there too. Like you know, when 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 you see it on display, the that blue just really you. You go past it when you're looking, and then you go back to it for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just, it was a, it was a well played out move on for a company that's only been around two years to have you know five facings. It, it does hold a, a shelf presence. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, you get to see the uh, the full array, and you guys certainly touch on uh, all all the aspects. Would you know what people are looking for? You, you should you could stay within uh, the Sereno series, and th- be a little something for everybody in there. Mm-hmm. Barring any FDA. Leaving that off the, the 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 table for conversation, um, what's what's the future? Well, Royale was an, another reason we used that name. We, uh, you know, my dad made a bundle at one time called the Royale line. So that one is FDA safe. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, barring the FDA moving forward, we have other names to work with. Okay. Um, that we've have pre two thousand seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so we have some working room, but. You know, I'm coming up with new ideas all the time, so it'd be cool to not have the FDA around. I don't know if it's going to stick or not. A um, good part of me thinks it is. Mm-hmm. You know, hopefully, you know, they lessen their hold on everything a little right. bit. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, we definitely do have other names to move forward with and keep producing blends. Mm-hmm. I've spoke to... Um Owners like yourself, mm-hmm. uh, both online and offline, and my stance has always been the same since when I used to have a cigar radio show, mm-hmm. and then and, and and there, so it's been about three years, 
And then when we heard the news and stuff started hitting the fan and people started getting all the blends in, you know, uh, just before the uh, predicate date, you know, my stance is that they're probably going to kick that can down the road and keep postponing it because it's w- because premium tobacco, luxury tobacco, which is what this is, mm-hmm. right, is not in their in in the government's interest. Um, they're lumping it in with other products, right. you know. So uh, I was told uh, both on air and offline that I am completely off my rocker with 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 that. Mm-hmm. But every once in a while, we see an FDA easement. Mm-hmm. Announcement come up, yeah. You know, we're at, and and it's not as, uh, and and you're closer to it than I am for sure. But it's not as this is going to happen no matter what stamp. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think that and hope for the sake of creativity, uh, for the hope of uh, industry, because I've seen cigars in other countries and how they're marketed, and you know. We don't want to stop marketing premium tobacco like they do the machine-made stuff in foreign countries. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where it's in a box. Oh, completely different. The animal. logos are watered down. You know, certain ones do well because they've been around for 100 years. Yeah. Any any new boutique machine-made product would be off its rocker to try to jump mm-hmm. into that industry. You know? Yeah. So I honestly think that it's going to be it, – it, 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 it's just going to be an easement. Yeah. Um, there are certainly probably going to be loopholes that you guys have to jump through. But I don't think that that, that number that they're throwing around, that 250 275 yeah. per blend, uh, I don't think it's going to come to that. Yeah. Uh, I think that it will probably come to a uh, little bit more of a um, controllable fee, mm-hmm. you know, what that is, I don't know. Like, you know, w- w- but from a business perspective, I don't see, you know, the, 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 the states have to look at what they're getting taxed, the tax revenue coming in from luxury tobacco. Now, in Rhode Island and Connecticut, we have a 50-cent cap tax that comes in. So each stick goes there, uh, but they're, uh, 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 a neighboring state is 40% of the revenue of the stick, Right. Uh, there are some states we interviewed the uh, gentleman from right. uh, Crux, yep. Casey, where mm-hmm. it's, it's 90 change up there, you know, for that. So whatever the Minnesota. tax structure, yeah. uh, Minnesota, thank right. you. Yep. Right. That, that's why he's called Rain Man. He knows all the <laughs> he, he knows all the details. Right? Random stats right? and figures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a concept person. He's yeah. he's, he's the, the details. Guy. He's a, right. But you know, it, uh, if you look at all of that revenue, mm-hmm. and to have that revenue come to a halt. Because now you have to make a business decision. Sure, you got some stuff in pre-predicate, and you got some names, and you and you got some workarounds. A lot of the cigar mm-hmm. people we interview do. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? We're, we're, we're not here to, to circumvent the system. I'm here to look at it from a realistic money-making standpoint. Luxury tobacco is heavily taxed. And not for nothing, tobacco, firearms, and alcohol are heavily taxed. So if they got away with it in that industry... What would stop them with with the craft beer? Yeah, because the craft beer opens up. You know, some craft beer people open up uh, as uh, farms locally, mm-hmm. as opposed to then they have a different license. They got to close by four or sunset. You know, et cetera, et cetera. So they they have some 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 workarounds there, and and that, that's all taxed. Yeah, and not for nothing. If you look at tax reform outside of the industry, but from a business perspective, you know. People, if they're making less and less money or people are retiring or whatever the tax structure is for the town, state, whichever, it, 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 they got to get it from somewhere. And so I th- honestly think, and I've said this so many times, where they're going to look at that revenue and say, this is going to be a blow to the industry. Mm-hmm. Because all they're going to do is make it kind of flat and non-creative, right? So, mm-hmm. So all the classic facings... Or the ones that got in by the predicate date will be fine, but then the consumer won't have any choice. Yeah. And so if any of those people on the hill, any hill, pick one, town hill, state hill, the hill, right? 
if any of them have a degree in economics 101, right, it'll tell you that, you know, since it's all heavily taxed and since it's there and since we have a tax structure in place, we should probably, if there's an industry of lack of creativity, now an industry is going to go stale. And you got to admit, these boutiques companies that, that, that come on the scene are fascinating. Yeah. Not only to you who, who – they inject creativity. You are sure. one, right? You are one. But now you're giving consumers another choice. Options. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. And when you give consumers another choice, you get extra consumers coming in to the economic system. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, and again, I've been told so many times that I am completely out of my element, was, was my favorite one. <laughs> but yet every time FDA does an e uh, uh, a, uh, email, I still forward the email to the person. And they're like, Joe, I know. I go, you remember our phone interview? And I, I remember that? Yeah, but just so you know. I think, I, and, and so I honestly think that, that in regards to the FDA, that's where it's going to go. But yeah. barring the FDA, you're going to come out with some new stuff? Oh, yeah. Pretty soon or? Next year. IPCPR? Yeah, or yeah what probably you, IPCPR. You, you, you're, you're waiting for yeah. IPCPR? Yeah, we'll just leave that there. No, I, I, yeah, get yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But, uh. Yeah, we're always working on new blends. Yeah. And yeah. things we're getting excited about, you know, within the company. So mm -hmm. Nice. And yeah. uh, obviously, you'll be doing all the creativity and marketing. Yeah. Now, do you get involved in the web development of that, too? For mm, Savino Cigars? Really. No. For, for, for the website? Mm -mm. No. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so they just take the labels that you create and they do the yeah. whole thing and they do that. Because the website. That's a pretty clean website with. Uh, well, 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 yeah. I, I mean, that's where I was yeah. going. Like, you know, a lot of times when you search for a cigar, which on Story Geeks, we get handed a cigar. We got to critique. We got to start some sort of a research right. to prepare for the Stogies of the Week. We're always, you know, uh, Googling sites or, 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 or searching for the sites. Then we come across yours. And it's, 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 it's uh, yours. It seems to me like all. The boutiques kind of have that covered. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if we start naming all these boutiques and, accessible and all that stuff, yeah. the, 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 the webs, they yeah. get it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And when you start going on to the classic face -ins, it's the same site from five years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? And but ours not, will be ever-evolving, too. Y yeah, but, you know, not for nothing, it's the same cigar as 100 years ago. Yeah. So if I expected the, the, right. <laughs> the website to be, <laughs> yeah. to, to be different, um, that will be that, so. You have any questions? I'm just really enjoying. It. I'm getting to the uh, cinnamon notes right now on this mm -hmm. uh, this cigar, and and I'm, I also feel underdressed. You've got like a four or five uh, button minimum going on there. <laughs> I, I wonder if I should take one down. I don't know. Hey, 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 that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, but back to yeah. the cigar. Uh, the wafer is certainly a win. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. the hell out of it. Yeah, absolutely. When we come back, Carson will still join us in studio. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> 